Welcome to the E-Academy. In today's episode, we will continue discussing the ABAX2 two-way wireless system. Last time, we registered the APD200 motion detector, the AXD200 universal detector used as a magnetic contact, and the ASP215 siren to the ACU220 controller working as a universal module of wireless devices. Now that we have this simple wireless system already prepared, let's look at the information displayed in the ABAX2 soft. Connection between the program and the ACU220 controller is already active. Click Read Data to read information from the module. Go to the Devices tab. In the table, in addition to the names, serial numbers and types of devices registered in our ACU220, several more columns are available. They refer, among other things, to the outputs and zones that can be associated with specific devices. By default, OUT1, Output and AR1, Zone are assigned everywhere. We will make changes and set them in accordance with the order resulting from successive numbers of the devices on our list. Leave the OUT1 output and the AR1 zone with the AP AMD200 motion detector. For the AMD200 magnetic contact, select OUT2 and AR2 and assign two pairs of outputs and zones, that is OUT3 and AR3 and OUT4 and AR4 to the ASP215 siren, which occupies two positions on the list. In the next column designated as ARU, you can indicate whether the selected wireless device is to communicate with the controller via the AR200 radio signals transmitter. Of course, to make this possible, such a repeater should first be registered to the system. This module is responsible for retransmission of radio signals from devices located outside the range of the controller, which effectively increases the range of the wireless system. Thanks to the use of the transmitter, the maximum distance between the controller and the selected device can be increased under favorable conditions by up to two times. The next column is designated Filter. It refers to the function of controlling the presence of radio devices in the system. The value entered here defines how many communication periods without contact between the controller and the device must pass before loss of communication is reported. If the selected device occupies more than one position on the list, set the filter only for one, the highest position, as it is illustrated by the example of the ASP215 siren. You can enter values from 0 to 255. Entering 0 means disabling the device presence control in the system. By default, the number 40 appears in this field. Go for a moment to the Configuration tab to check what communication period is currently set. OK, it's 12 seconds. In this case, therefore, we can calculate that for a loss of communication with a selected device to be reported, a minimum time of 480 seconds must elapse. That is more than 8 minutes. If you want to reduce this time, say, to 5 minutes, you will have to set a filter equal to 25. After entering and confirming the values in the filter field, move the cursor over them. The program will then indicate the calculated time to make the configuration easier. Important note, in the last column you can enable the ECHO option. Please note that if the option is enabled for the selected radio device, then the periodic communication with this device will take place every 3 minutes. This significantly extends the maximum operating time without battery replacement. Remember, however, that this will also prolong the time that must elapse before communication loss is reported. In such a case, if you leave the default value, that is 40, in the filter field, a possible loss of communication with the device will only be reported after two hours. In this situation, the program will display the non-compliance with grade 2 warning. Why? Well, according to the requirements of the EN50131 standard for Grade 2, loss of communication with wireless devices shall be reported before 20 minutes have elapsed. Hence, to meet the requirements of Grade 2 with the ECHO option enabled, the value in the filter field should be no more than 6, which means up to 18 minutes. The next column in the Devices tab is Configuration. It displays additional options and parameters for individual devices. For example, for the APD200 motion detector, the preset sensitivity level is displayed, while for the AMD200 magnetic contact, no additional options are available. In the case of the ASP215 siren, information about the maximum signaling time and selected sound is displayed. Additionally, on the right side of the window, you can select the optical signaling option. 
The ASP215 siren occupies two positions on the list of wireless devices. Consequently, you can define two ways of signaling that can be triggered independently. As a result, you get the ability to distinguish between two alarms, for example, between the burglary and fire alarms. The alarms may differ by the maximum duration of signaling, the type of sound, and the occurrence of the optical signals. Some of the ABAX2 system devices send the ambient temperature information to the controller. You can check the current temperature values in the status tab. If it turns out that the temperature indication should be corrected, then in the column second to last of the device table, you can set a correction ranging from minus 3.5 to plus 3.5 degrees Celsius. Let's check how it works. Here, the current temperature measured by the sensor placed in the APD200 detector is indicated. Let's make a plus 3 correction, send data to the module. Return to the status tab and wait for the data from the detector to be received. OK, the displayed value is higher than the previous one by 3 degrees, though the temperature around the motion detector has not changed. So you can see that the correction has been taken into account. OK, now let's take a look at the next fields visible in the status tab. At the top, you can see information about the controller itself. The first table refers to its zones. Four control ones designated AR1 to AR4 and the TMP zone connected to the tamper switch. The green dot means normal state. Let's try to violate them one by one. As you can see, every violation is signalled by the indicator colour changing to red. It is worth remembering here that, as shown in the previous episode, individual zones and outputs of the ACU220 module can be programmed as NO, normally open, or NC, normally shortened to common ground or closed. To change their type, click twice on the selected field in the configuration tab. Next to the zone state table, there is another one containing information on possible jamming of the ABAX2 radio communication. If jamming is detected, a yellow triangle with an exclamation point and a percentage indicator of jamming signal level will appear in the table. Additionally, the output designated as jam will be activated. The exclamation point icon turning grey means jamming memory. The level indication refers then to the last recorded case. Further, to the right is a voltage indicator and graphical representation of the dip switch settings on the module electronics board. The next table shows the state of controller outputs. You can find information here about programmable outputs designated OUT1 to OUT8, as well as for other outputs which indicate possible problems in the ABAX2 system. In a moment we will see how they behave depending on what is going on in the system. The first of them is TPR, an output that provides information about tamper of the ACU220 module or other registered wireless devices. Now, to trigger the tamper indication, open the APD200 detector enclosure. You can see that the output has been activated as shown by the program indicator and the module onboard LED. Information about what device the tamper refers to is shown below the device's status table. Closing the enclosure deactivates the output. As regarding information about the detector, only the icon indicating the tamper memory remains. The next output is marked as CON. It indicates that there is a communication loss with the wireless devices. To check how it works, let's first reduce the time after which loss of communication with the APD200 motion detector will be reported. To do so, set a filter equal to 1 and deactivate ECO option. Save the data to the controller and return to the status tab. Open the detector enclosure again and remove the battery. Initially, only information about tamper is available. We have to wait more than 12 seconds, which is longer than one communication period. OK, a suitable icon appears next to the detector indicating a communication problem. At the same time, the CON output state changed to active. The next output has already been mentioned. Designated as JAM, it activates when the controller detects jamming of radio communication. The last output is LBA. It informs you about the power problems in the wireless system. It activates when the battery voltage of any of the devices drops below a certain level, or when there are irregularities with the power supply of ACX220 expanders or ARU200 retransmitters registered in the controller. Now, to test the operation of the LBA output, let's install a low battery in the APD200 detector. The detector has connected to the system. As you can see, the measured value of its battery voltage is low. After a while, the LBA output status changed to active. Now let's go to the device's status table. 
You can find here a lot of information about individual wireless devices registered in the ACU220 module. In addition to communication, power supply or temperature indications, you can also see in this table whether the device is active and what its status is. In the ABAX2 system, detectors can work in two modes, passive and active. The passive mode means that the detector transmits information to the controller only during periodic communication or, for example, after detecting tamper. The purpose is saving energy. In the active mode, for example, when the system is armed, information on violations is sent to the controller immediately. Let's check how it works. Now we will violate the AMD200 by moving the magnet away from it. The detector is not in the active state, so information about its status will be sent only during the periodic communication. As you can see, the violation has been indicated in the program. This also activated the OUT2 output, which we previously associated with the magnetic contact. Move the magnet and observe the indications. Also, this time the detector status information was updated in the controller only during periodic communication. OK, as previously determined, the AMD200 operating mode will depend on the state of AR2 zone. Let's violate it. We have to wait until information on turning on the active mode is sent to the detector. A green indicator appears in the activity field. The detector has confirmed entering the active mode. Let's check therefore how indications of its state will change in the program. As you can see, information about whether the detector is violated or not coincides with the actual state. The last device on the list is the ASP215 Siren. In this case, the status field will show confirmation whether the signaling is currently active. To start the signaling, violate the AR3 zone. Optical signaling has turned on. There is also a red indicator in the state field. The siren will stop flashing after a specified time has elapsed, or earlier if the control zone returns to its normal state and the siren itself receives the next periodic communication. In the device's status table, the radio signal level indicators can also be seen. The first of them, or RSSI ACU, informs you about the level of signal received from a given device by the controller. The second indicator informs you about the level of signal received by the device from the controller. These indications are presented as a percentage or in units of power. Next time, we will tell you how to interpret these indicators and what to pay attention to when installing the ABAX2 devices. That's all for today. Thank you. We invite you to watch the next episodes of the Academy. See you soon.